Hello everyone and welcome to Fist Chat, the vodcast that features discussions on the topics of film, science and technology. My name is Ben Warner and I'm joined once again uh, by my good friend and colleague Steve Kern. How are we today, Steve? I'm good, thanks Ben. Hello Fist Chat fans. Uh, it's good to be back after a couple of weeks off and uh, chatting to everyone again. Yep, and uh, in... In, our, in true form for our nutty schedules, uh, we're pre-recording uh, four episodes today on this uh, lovely uh, Saturday in May um, because uh, next couple of weeks we're going to be all over the shop. But uh, fortunately, our episodes will be um, sort of interspersed over the next couple of weeks and uploaded, even though we're recording them all today. But we've got, we've got plenty to talk about. Um, but before we get into all of that, uh, don't forget our website, F-I-S-T-C-H-A-T.com, fistchat.com. Get all our links there. You can subscribe to our audio via iTunes, RSS and FeedBurner, uh, videos on YouTube, Vimeo and Digicosm TV. And you can interact with us on Twitter, Google Plus and Facebook. So I'd love to hear from you. Uh, we've got our ebook, The Fist Report at fistreport.com that's available on Amazon only 99 cents bargain really from and uh, it helps to support our show uh, and uh, there's us the supplementary content our weekly blogs photography on Instagram and Flickr and um, please recommend us to anyone who may be interested in our discussions on film science and technology and uh, we've got quite a bit to cover in our episodes today but uh, we're going to be focusing on uh, tech uh in this episode and uh, Google I.O. Um, in particular and a bit later we'll talk about the uh, the new Xbox One from Microsoft for just briefly at the end there. Yeah, um, exciting. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was, uh, just, was just saying to you before we got on, I've, I was watching a bit of the keynote and um, before we get into what they were talking about, um, just as a point of contrast, um, I actually... I mean, there's no way I was going to sit through a three and a half hour keynote, <laughs> but um, I, I did find it was uh, a lot less pretentious than uh, the Apple ones have become. And uh, uh, if it sort of trades off on the accessibility thing, so I don't think, uh, you know, your everyday sort of people are going to be interested um, in the way they were talking, especially, especially when they were getting into a lot of the technical developer stuff. Um, that people, most normal people, I don't think would really be interested in. Well, that's what Android's all about, Ben. <laughs> well, the, yeah, all the tinkering. <laughs> yeah, <COVID, the> yeah. <laughs> it's all the uh, all the tinkering, right? That's right. <laughs> but um, they did announce, uh, you know, a lot of things. You got your usual stuff, you know. Google they announced uh, 900 million Android activations, 48 billion app downloads. That was like their you know, Apple moment where they're saying, oh, you know, we're breaking all these milestones and whatever. And, you know, for, regardless of, uh, you know, if, whether you like it or not, I'm not into it. As I've already said uh, previously, Android is the most uh, widely used operating system on mobile devices. So you can't really argue with that. So there's a lot of people out there that like it. Or, yeah, is, or, or should I say, is it because they're cheaper? Oh, don't start that debate, man. <laughs> um, well, it is true. You can get a get uh, get those phones cheaper. It's uh, just for people that want free apps. Well, there's that too. <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of things. I think um, it was really more developer based and software based and uh, and cloud based sort of. Uh, innovations that they were talking about um you know they were talking about um, a lot more cloud integration between each of their devices and uh, all of that sort of thing um which was interesting um a lot of new i think apis for some of their game services and you know like where you sort of take one device and then play the yes. continue on with another device which is uh, all good google cloud messaging um they're integrating that more that's um I guess, yeah, cloud-based messaging service. I guess kind of like what, iMessage maybe? Yeah, I guess so. And uh, they were revealing uh, unlocked Samsung Galaxy S4 um, phones for 649 US starting June 26. Um, a subscription service to Google Play Music, $9.99 a month. Wow. Um, Oh, that, and they were giving a free Chromebook Pixel to all uh, I.O. attendees. Um, one thing that they didn't really... Oh, hang on. And I should also mention that it says Google launches Hangouts, but um, I, I mean, I'm guessing this is more um, expanding on uh, their messaging service in general across all of their platforms as opposed to um, the Google Hangouts that it's that's in Google+. Yeah, well, that's right. I mean, just imagine uh, getting... 
the equivalent of a Google tweet no matter where you are. Oh, well, there you go. Get that integration happening. They've also got the <laughs> um, Google Plus photo features, more s- cloud storage for that, um, more innovations with their Google Maps. Uh, yeah, all, all interesting stuff. Um, the two things I thought, well, I mean, we can talk about a little bit about that, but um, th- there was an interesting bit about CEO Larry Page talking about competition and negativity and innovation. Um, I'm assuming... Uh, sort of flagging that sort of their tiff with, uh, oh, well, I guess Samsung's tiff with uh, Apple and whether that's stifling things, Um, you know, because they're apparently, oh, let's get over all this bickering and, you know, let's just all, all, I don't just, it's just not going to happen and they can't say that they're not guilty of it. (laughs) Just don't be evil. Exactly. That's their mantra, right? But um Google Glasses, I don't think, got too much of a mention from the sounds of things, even though it was, uh, from the sounds of things, one of the first um, uh, times that they actually gave them to the, in the hands of the developers. Yeah, it's, it's quite interesting, isn't it? Like, they've been playing the glasses very low-key. I mean, there's been a, a fairly big discussion and there's potentially a big backlash over the glasses mm. uh, with the whole privacy issue. Um, so that's interesting. And also the fact that they probably is still keeping Hangout low-key as well, um, mm. which is which effectively is, you know, pretty much if, if everybody on a browser now uses Google essentially as a homepage or a directory to wherever they're going, then uh, if they extend their other services in a similar way, you know, such as messages popping up on your Google search page, uh, you no longer need to load... Uh, tweet deck or anything like that so yeah very interesting but why do you think they've kept the glasses so low profile i'm not entirely sure unless there it was they're not ready to push it at this stage as much as what they well, thought they could or who knows 100 out in uh, test mode i mm. think on uh, various people around the states and uh when they first did announce that for, right from the start they uh There were places banning people wearing Google glasses and there was the whole debate about privacy. So it's it's very interesting, you know, uh, with regard to what will happen and and whether or not people will accept them. Yeah, exactly. Just one other thing. uh, Apparently, they announced... um peer-to-peer payments uh, it was sort of hidden in the uh, in the IO there uh, the idea that you know say if I borrowed 20 bucks off you I can just pay you back literally almost like sending an email back to you yeah um, which uh, you, if they manage to get it you know if they get it all secure uh, you could imagine that doing pretty well well once again you know I guess maybe uh I didn't think laterally enough when we've spoken about Google before and what the mm. future holds. You know, sometimes it was hard to see, but they've obviously realised that they've got a home page in in just about everybody's uh, desktop, mm. and uh, that essentially means that if you've got Google, if you're using Google, uh, then you can basically you know do your peer to peer transactions or file shares, or although I don't know how Google feels about that but through mm. the Google network. And that's, you know, the cloud services, everything. That's very, very powerful. Is it really just a question of identity that's uh, preventing this from really taking off just yet? Because really the, the issue of doing this over a cloud-based service, which is basically what it is, is that say I have to do a transaction with you, but I can't see you and I, uh, can I, if I can't go by, you know, just I know it's you, but say, for example, I didn't know it was you and um, I didn't want to just send you, you know, some money. Yeah. Um, there has to be some sort of system in place that verifies the identity of both parties so that the transaction can then go through. And, well, that, and that would seem to be the most difficult thing as far as this sort of thing's concerned. Well, let's hope they're not using Google's, you know, two-level identification system of a mobile phone number and I don't know uh, your name or something like that. But interestingly, there's a bank in Australia, you've probably seen the adverts, Ben, uh, that actually does provide that service mm. uh, already. And and you would imagine then because effectively all it is an electronic funds transfer. Yeah. And, you know, if it's coming from your bank account and you're sending it to somebody else's bank account, mm. 
that's a very simple transaction. As you say, it's, it's very interesting to see how doing it essentially in a third, well, not 30, within a third party, which is Google, mm. how that how that will actually pan out. And, you know, I don't want to be, uh, you know, negative, yeah. uh, like Larry Page might say, but, you know, that just seems to me to be open to all sorts of exploitation. Yeah, well, uh, unless they perhaps introduce some new technology, maybe some biometrics maybe into these uh, devices. But then again, there's no system really that couldn't be fooled in some way, surely. True, but I guess the thing is, is while this will make it easier to send some money to someone in Nigeria, it'll it'll probably also make it easier to track where that money goes in Nigeria. So maybe just the transparency that Google will have will Mm. be enough to prevent the fraud. And I would think that uh, Google would be at the forefront of developing any of this kind of technology, technology too, because uh, the one thing I did notice, say, compared to an Apple keynote or any of their innovations, is that um, Google just tries it. Yeah. yeah. Whereas uh, Apple will not do it unless they think they can do it 100%. And I think a lot of that reason is because, you know, Apple has to work in, in the real world with hardware. Yeah. Google is fantastic, software only, you know. Just like Microsoft in the 90s, 80s and 90s, yeah? Exactly. You know, it didn't really matter if they didn't get it right because they'd always have another version coming out a little bit later on. And someone else to blame uh, if it didn't work. <laughs> All righty. Well, just, uh, we just mentioned Microsoft there. We'll just move quickly over to Microsoft's recent announcement of the new Xbox One, uh, which uh, is probably a long overdue. The Xbox 360 was uh, there for quite a long time. Uh, probably... Uh, I mean, it it kind of highlights the fact that they're pushing it as a multimedia device as opposed to a gaming console, which makes sense because. Uh, but but the thing is, it seems like a really big device for what it is, um, and it's got a lot of older well older technology and the idea of a Blu-ray player, yeah. which is on the way out. Um, and then there was this thought that this they're, they're designing this so that it will last another decade. You know, like because that's how long the Xbox 360 lasted for. Yeah. Surely, in in this day and age, they can't launch a device like that and expect to get ten years out of it. I would have thought. I, I know. I, <laughs> to me, I, I was very confused as to what Microsoft were trying to achieve. Just like you are, Ben. It's it's kind of like it's like gap technology. Mm. I would have thought, and and if you put yourself in in the shoes of probably Apple or Samsung. The sort of device they would have invented would have been probably just like a miniature server yeah. that would handle all those features. Uh, instead, uh, it almost appears that Microsoft with their Xbox box have set themselves up to go the same way as Sony, you know, producing mm. hardware products that have limited relevance in and, the future. And the, there's some odd things in there too. I mean, okay, so they include the Blu-ray player, but then uh, all of the it sounded like all the games from the Xbox 360 weren't compatible. So what's yeah, the I, so what's the point? You know, exactly. You're probably downloading the games now. I don't know. You know, yeah. I, I, and I would have thought that with uh, Microsoft's cloud capacity now uh, and their systems. Mm you know, basically working seamlessly through the cloud. I don't understand why you've got hardware with the features they have, but, but you know, it, it does, it seems a lot like Sony to me where you've got one division probably not talking to the other mm. and they're still doing what they know best. But I, I would imagine this will be the last Xbox. Yeah, or, or as, as it is, as a gaming console. They might still keep the name, but um, it'll turn into some other type of device. Well, I, I suspect the next Xbox will probably look something like Apple TV. Yeah, funny that. It's already black. It went, went from white to black, didn't it? <laughs> All right, Steve, I think we'll uh, wrap it up there. So thanks again for this chat. Anytime, this chat fans, let us know if you're going to rush out and buy one of those Xboxes because I'll come around to your place. Absolutely. All right, so that's it for this episode. So we'll catch you next time. 